Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm going to be answering some of your guys' questions. I put on a little, the little Instagram question poll type of thing on Instagram and you guys asked me a bunch of questions and I was sick for like the last week and a half so I didn't get to film any mass Mondays, I didn't get to film any videos because your girl was dying in her bed so now I'm back to normal thank God and I need to do something with this hair by the way it's looking real crazy real rough I need to wash it and I have a new mask coming out this mask Monday it sounds like I'm making the mask but now I have this new hair mask that I'm going to review on Monday and I'm excited for you guys to check it out so anyways jumping into the video jumping right into the questions I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm gonna go ahead and pick out some of the questions that you guys asked me you guys asked some real juicy questions now all of them involved hair a lot of them involved about my engagement and like are we wedding planning so I'm gonna answer some of those questions uh, let me pull up some okay so it was a lot of questions so I'm gonna go ahead and answer some and yeah okay. first question is do you work out and the answer to that is no I don't work out like I work out but I'm not a regular like I'm not regularly in the gym as I should be I wish I was very motivated to go to the gym but unfortunately I'm not so I work out like once a week or like whenever I decide to go to the gym but I really want to get into like a workout routine and just find the motivation to actually get my butt to the gym that would be very nice but usually I don't work out unfortunately but I want to um, the next question is what are the worst curly hair mistakes and for me, I truly believe the worst curly hair mistakes is not using shampoo. A lot of curly girls or people tend to completely stay away from shampoo and I was that girl and I noticed that now that I'm incorporating shampoo more frequently into my routine, my curls get a complete reset and they're not as there's not as much buildup, which means I have a healthier scalp. When I first started transitioning, I was just co-washing my hair because I was told that shampoo was bad and like all the reviews, like it's super bad. It dries out your hair really, really bad. And that is true to an extent, but you need to shampoo your hair because you need to get rid of all of the buildup. And I feel like just co-washing your hair alone for months at a time is really not going to strip away all that extra buildup and like that extra product residue and all that stuff. So my worst curly hair mistake was probably not shampooing for an extended period of time. I was very loyal to co-washing. I'm still very loyal to co-washing, but I definitely shampoo at least two to three times a month. In the winter time, I shampoo a little bit less just because my hair is automatically drier and I want to keep it hydrated and that's the reason why you shouldn't shampoo regularly but but also if you decide to shampoo your hair and when you decide to shampoo your hair make sure you are using a sulfate free shampoo because if you're using shampoos that have sulfates in it then it's definitely going to dry out your hair but your girl was just not shampooing at all I would shampoo like once every two months so that's a mistake I would not make anymore. The next question is, what do you look for in your products? And that's a great question because I'm always trying out something new and I'm always, I'm always sent different stuff, but the product does not contain parabens and sulfates and like no harsh alcohols or like anything like that, then I would try it. So silicones, I don't have an issue with silicones. My hair actually really likes silicones and I, I like silicones in my hair I like the slippery feel again I shampoo my hair pretty consistent now in comparison to before so I don't have any problem getting rid of any silicones and I also do ACV rinse which, which really reset my hair like totally anything else I'm okay with again strong alcohols and anything like that I try to avoid it but for the most part as long as it doesn't contain sulfates and parabens I'm good Next question is, do you prefer length over health? At a certain point, now that I'm curly, I definitely 
now that I'm curly, now that I went natural, or now that I'm natural, I definitely prefer health over length. I feel like you can have both. You can have long hair and healthy hair. Back in the day when my hair was straight, I was obsessed with length, and I did not want to get haircuts. I did not want to cut my hair because I did not want to get rid of the length, and I wanted to hold on to just having the long, jet black, straight hair and I was always holding on to the length. I don't really care about length. I mean, I do care about length. Obviously, like now I'm trying to grow out my hair, which low key guys, I'm really not feeling my long hair. I look back at other pictures of how my hair looked when it was shorter and I honestly prefer it shorter, but I kind of want to let it grow long just to see and like to say I did it, but I don't know. I don't know, but now I definitely prefer health over length. What is your favorite deep conditioner? And I've answered this a couple times or like I've hinted it out in my videos. My top two at the moment, which haven't really changed for a while, has been the Weed Ad Triple Treat, Triple Treat Deep Conditioner from Weed Ad. It's the purple line and it's the one catered for kinky curls, so purple packaging, and the Diva Curl Heaven and Hair. Those two are my favorite at the moment. I've been loving them for a while. I've tried other deep conditioners, but I feel like when my curls need that extra hydration and I really need my curls to pop, those two are one of my go-to deep conditioners. So the next question is, this is a really good one. This is a hard one because I'm always cocktailing different things and I'm always trying different things. This one says, if you choose to stay with a curly hair routine for the rest of your life, how would your routine be like? So, my routine would be like the one that I literally just posted for extra, for the maximum moisture, which is like my fall slash winter routine. I feel like my hair will not get tired of that routine. The only thing is, I mean, your hair does get tired of things, so I will like swap things out. Like, maybe I'll not use the gel, and if you have not seen the video, the, the products that I used was the new Myel Organic Shampoo and Conditioner Duo and the Sotanical Slip and Slide uh, Detangler? What is it called? Slip and Slide Detangler, which I use as a leave-in conditioner. Then the cream was the, I can't believe it's not butter, or butter with an A. And then the last one is the Uncle Funky's Daughter Curly Magic Gel. That gel is amazing. So that's the little combo I did. I love that combo. I have amazing results. So if I were to stick with a routine, I'll probably stick to that one, but I would swap out the shampoo and conditioner and I'll throw in um, a co-wash. And my favorite co-wash at the moment is the one also mentioned in that video. It's the Curl Talk from Not Your Mother's, the three in one. That little combo is amazing. So I would stick to that routine until I get tired, I guess. Next question, a product you cannot live without. So this is a great question. Like I've never thought about this question, but honestly guys, I think you're gonna be surprised with the answer. But a product I cannot live without, if she's speaking like, if this person refers to like one actual product, is Eco Styler Gel. And the reason why I cannot live without Eco Styler Gel is because Eco Styler Gel, specifically the Argan Oil one, literally lays my edges like no other gel, no other edge control, and my edges will not move. And I feel like you can have the crappiest hairstyle and if your edges are laid, to me, in my opinion, like you may not have to agree with this, but if your edges are laid, I feel like you look a little bit more put together and you're a little bit more on point. I mean, that's just my opinion just because I, I love laying edges and I feel like it just polishes an overall look. Even if you do a messy bun, if you do two braids, if you do no products and your hair is just natural, but your edges are tame with some eco salad gel, girl, I feel like it just completes the look. So yeah, so one product I cannot live without, eco salad gel, because I can use, I can always have my edges on point and I can cocktail that with whatever product I'm using for the day. So the next question is, do your sisters have the same hair as you? The answer is no. My sisters do not have the same hair as me. As me. Granted, they do have naturally curly hair because both my parents have curly hair, but their texture is looser than mine. My older sister has the loosest texture, I believe, in comparison to all of us, or maybe my middle sister. I don't know. But they both, like, their, their curls are not as tight as me. My middle sister, she straightens her hair a lot, so I think her hair is tighter. 
her hair has the potential to be tighter but because she straightens it a lot it's like a looser curl pattern and then my older sister she went fully natural and her texture is totally different from mine's too so I think I'm the only one in the 3B 3C category they're more in like the 3A 3B category so we kind of have different curls okay so somebody asks can you try to mix all of your curly hair products together and style it with your hair so that's a funny, I've, I've seen the videos go around on YouTube for a while and I feel like it's a waste of product, number one. Number two, I have so many curly hair products, I seriously won't even know where to start. And even if I put like a droplet of each product, it's still going to be too much, so I'm definitely going to end up wasting product. And three, I feel like that's going to give me the craziest amount of product buildup. Like, I don't think that would be cute. And four, I feel like my hair would never dry, so I don't know. I don't know. Okay, next question. This is another question that I get all the time in my DMs, and I really don't understand why people still ask me this question, and it's would you ever straighten your hair? I, I'm assuming people have a fascination just to see my hair straighten. I don't know why. I have, I'm have. i not curious to see what my hair looks straight in. I've straightened my hair before. I've posted pictures on Instagram with my hair straight. Personally, I don't think, I, I'm not going to say never because, hello, obviously we change, we grow, things happen, but my stage of mind that I am in right now, I don't think I will straighten my hair. I have no need to straighten my hair. As far as to see how long my hair is, I could just pull on a curl and I could do a little quick length, length check. I'm not obsessing over, oh my God, my hair grew an inch, my hair grew three centimeters. I'm not obsessing over length. I can see my hair growing without me obsessing over it. And I feel like if you obsess over it, it's not gonna grow because it knows you're watching it. Like, I don't know, that's just my theory. I just feel like if you're watching your hair all the time, you're never gonna see the progress. So just surprise yourself. Just, just casually one day, just pull on a curl and be like, ooh, I didn't see you growing that long. So, um, Answer to that is no. I don't think I'm going to straighten my hair. Uh, again, I'm not going to say never because you never know. But the only thing I'm going to say, I was thinking about this the, the other day, is that in the winter time when I used to straighten my hair, get my, my fresh blowout from the salon, from the Dominican salon, is, um, dang, I got distracted because I said Dominican and now I'm thinking about Spanish and how you guys are always asking me to make Spanish videos. And I need to make Spanish videos, but I feel like el español mío no es tan bueno. Bueno, el español mío es bueno, pero yo no estoy cómoda sentándome alante de la cámara a hablar en español en un video, like, completo. Yo soy muy Spanglish, y yo hablo los dos idiomas, so no sé, como que me asusta. Y también, yo no sé cómo decir muchos de los nombres de los productos que yo uso, so, eso me tiene a mí, no sé. Pero every time I would get a Dominican blowout in like the Dominican salon and they would do my hair and I was feeling brand new and like nobody could tell me anything, I would run my fingers through my hair and like it was so soft and like so straight and actually run my fingers through my hair. I can't do that anymore. I don't, I can't like go down. Like now I go up, like I have to scrunch my hair. And stuff like that. That's the only thing I miss is being able to like run my hands through my hair when it's dry. Because I can do it when it's wet, but I can't do it when it's dry. So that feeling of just like, oh, which way do I want to wear my hair today? Do I want to part it down the middle? Do I want to part it down the side? Or let me just run my fingers through to see where my hair falls. Like, I can't do it anymore. Now you got to actually part your hair and like train it to stay on one side. Otherwise, it would be like, ooh, everywhere. So yeah. I don't know, I think I went off topic. Anyways, so I'm going to just stay, step away from the curly hair questions and I'm going to answer some more personal questions. What did you study in college and why? So I went to Baruch. I actually have one more semester left, which I'm going to do next semester. And I'm so excited to be going back to school. I mean, who says that? But I am. And I go to Baruch College in New York. I studied communications. Everyone swears that because you go to Baruch, you have to study business. And I wish I would have studied business, but I wish it was more interesting because when I was there, it was not interesting at all. I took a couple of business courses and it was just not my thing. So I went with communications because communications, you can apply it to everything and anything. So I figured I'll get a communications degree and I'll be able to communicate with everyone. Yeah. All this is 
a great question. I didn't even see this question. So this question says, how do you stay grounded in God when temptation and corruption seems to be in every corner? That is a freaking awesome question. And I kind of just read this. Um, I didn't read these questions before jumping in the video. I just wanted to like have, I wanted to give you guys an authentic response. So I'm answering them as I'm reading them. And that's a great question. Let me break that up. Hold on, because that's a deep question. I got to think about that. I got to think about this one. How do you stay grounded in God when temptation and corruption seems to be in every corner? So my response to that would be, it's hard, right? And temptation is literally everywhere, obviously. I'm not sure what specific temptations she's referring to, but in the stage that I am in with God right now, I'm in a very isolated state, right? Um, I, I've isolated myself from friends that have been like my friends for a long time that may not necessarily be Christian or they may be Christian, I don't know. I've just isolated myself to be by myself and just spend that time with God. Granted, granted, I get lazy sometimes and I don't always talk to God and I don't always read my Bible and I don't always worship, but I feel like to me what has helped me is kind of disconnecting from what, what everyone else is doing and what everyone else calls fun and what everyone else enjoys doing and the world kind of sees as fun and just like disconnecting myself from there and having that time with God alone seeking God and really I would have to say what has helped me a lot is watching preachings online and I know a lot of people may not be into that um it's 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 an adjustment because I'm the type of person born and raised in a Pentecostal church and I was used to the panderos, I was used to the worship, the Spanish music, all that stuff. I was used to that atmosphere and now that I'm a little bit older, I'm looking right now for an actual whole, a church to call my home because my fiance, he doesn't speak Spanish. So when we get married, we need to have a church where we both can be, we both can grow spiritually and we both obviously understand and enjoy the language. So to me, something that has helped me has been listening to preachings from Pastor Mike Todd. He, I hope I'm saying his name right, he is from Transformation Church here on YouTube and they have a church in Oklahoma. Just being constantly reminded about God and just constantly being reminded and, and asking God for wisdom and discernment in certain situations that may be tempting um, is something that has really kept me grounded in God and it's something that you need to constantly be around things that would feed your spiritual side, right? So being constantly in that reminder, constantly talking to God, constantly having that relationship with God that he will allow you to get discernment in what areas, where you should be, where you should not be, and just things like that will help you keep your faith grounded. So I hope that answered the question, how do you stay grounded and see? And just staying true to yourself, honestly, it's very hard, especially being on social media, staying true to yourself, right? Um, there's always comparison, there's always people who you compare yourself to and that's something that it just comes with it like you're always gonna look at someone else and say dang like they're living this life they're living this what about me and don't compare yourself to anyone be you be happy with what God gave you be happy in the state and the season that you're in right now and always put God first in everything and anything that you do and always ask God for guidance in whatever direction or whatever path or just whatever your next step is that you're going to be in so oh this is an interesting one what is your boyfriend's nationality so he's not my boyfriend anymore he's my fiance we have officially leveled up so he doesn't get the boyfriend title even though I always call him I still say my boyfriend like it's weird to say fiance so I'll let you pass for this one but he is Dominican Puerto Rican and Cuban so he he has an interesting mix he's, he's a little bit of everything and then oh I Oh, this, um, I 
Another question is how old am I? I am 23 years old. 23. How did you know your fiance was the one? Ooh, that's that's a good question. I still ask myself that. Now I'm just kidding. Um here's one thing. Uh just to answer that question and then I'll end the video. How did you know your fiance was the one? That's a good ass question. Like that's a really good question. Um That's a good question. I can't, I, <laughs> I'm like, that's a good question, but I'm not answering it. How do I know my fiance? Okay, so here's the thing. My fiance, okay, rewind to before I got with my fiance. I've always prayed to God before, right? When I was like 15, 16, I've always said, God, I don't want a boyfriend. I want a husband, right? I don't want anyone, I don't want to be testing the waters, I don't want to see if he's the one that's going to stick, I don't want to be with different guys to like see, you know, like things like that, I don't know, I just, that wasn't my, that wasn't my thing and my parents have always installed that into us, like, you know, like you, the person that you're going to be with, you want him to be your husband. I prayed about it when I was like 15 years old, I made this list. Um, this video is like getting so like different. <laughs> this is so weird. But anyways, I made a list. I wrote out a list and I prayed to God and I wrote down everything that I wanted my husband to have. Right? Not my boyfriend. My husband. I was single at the time. Obviously, I was 15. I wasn't even thinking about boys. I wasn't I wasn't thinking about boys. I was 15. Like what? Obviously now, nowadays it's like 15. You're like married and you have like 10 boyfriends. Like it's different nowadays. But my time, six, seven years ago, I was not thinking about a boyfriend. But I was thinking about a husband, right? I was thinking about who I wanted to spend the rest of my life with and what I wanted him to look like. And I prayed about it and I always told God, I was like, God, this is who I want and this is what I want him to have. Now the image of how he was gonna look was totally different from my the way my fiance looks. I mean, he's attractive as hell and he's sexy as hell, but in my mind, I wanted someone, I had like this image of what this person was supposed to look like. And got through a curveball, he was, he, he's different. He's a little exotic looking. He doesn't look Latino, that's for sure. I was like, I want a Dominican, Dominican baseball player. He has to look this, he has to be tall, he has to be this. And then I got my baby. He's Dominican, but he doesn't speak Spanish. <laughs> he definitely doesn't play baseball, but he's tall and he's fine as hell, so I'm happy. But um, this got me all cheesy. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, how did I know he was the one? Because I prayed for him. I prayed for everything, and he did not check off everything from the list, but he did check off 99. All right, I'm exaggerating. He checked about 90%, right? Nobody's perfect. Everybody has their issues but I prayed for him and I was dead serious I was like God like seriously I want a husband I don't want a boyfriend I don't want to test the waters I just want someone who's gonna be with me that you literally picked and created for me like I want to be with that person that you have selected me to be with them and them to be with me and I feel like every day it's a confirmation. Every day is a learning process. Sometimes things happen where I doubt. I'm like, damn, like, is he the one? Is he not the one? But at the end of the day, I always have peace in my relationship. And I feel like if you have peace in your relationship and you're praying about it and you're asking God for direction, honestly, it's, di I mean, it's different for everyone. Like, I, I'm, I'm a big, I'm very big on signs. And I'm like, God, if I see a red flag, then he's not the one. Like, that's it. Like, he's not the one. But at the same time, I pray about it. And I'm like, God, like, seriously, I want to get married once and once only. And I want to have a successful marriage, right? And that's, it's, it's very, it's not something you're seeing every day, right? Not everybody's getting married. And if you are getting married, not everybody, everyone is lasting in a marriage. So that's not something I want. And that's something that I pray for heavily. I really want my marriage to be successful I want my marriage to last and in order for that to happen we both need to have that relationship with God and we both need to be well grounded in the Lord to be able to have a successful relationship and we both need to want the same thing I think I, I kind of 
brambles a little bit, but how do I know he's the one? Because I have peace in my heart and I truly believe that we're going to work out and that we're going to be a successful marriage, God willing. And yeah. Damn, that was a deep question. <laughs> you guys have me a little trouble there real quick. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of video. It's a more laid back, chill video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it showed you a little different side of Chili's curls on a more personal level, not always hair. If you guys have questions, if you guys want me to do videos with my fiance, he's a little camera shy, but I think I could convince him to get on and do a little video with me. But um, yeah, so if you guys want to see videos with us together or like any other videos that is not necessarily always hair related, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and for listening to me and just being patient with me because I ramble a lot, but I mean, who doesn't? So if you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below. If you're not following me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. I'm excited because we just hit 300K and I'm saying we because... All of us this is a community we all did this together we reached 300k and I have a huge 300k giveaway coming real soon you guys don't want to miss it it's gonna be happening sometime next week I believe so make sure you are following me on Instagram so you can be part of it it's at Shelly's curls the same thing of my YouTube so thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in my next video